All right, 25 minutes before eight here on the program. The ANC has recommended the appointment of the former mayor of the Mzunduzi municipality, Zanele Tlachuao, as a commissioner at the Public Service Commission. But the Democratic Alliance is not happy with that. It's threatening to approach the courts to have the recommendation set aside. The party says Tlachuao isn't a good candidate because she was removed from her position as Mzunduzi mayor after the municipality was placed under administration due to maladministration and corruption. Also possibly to be challenged by the DA is the recent appointment of former SASA minister Batibile Dlamini as the chair of the Social Housing Regulatory Authority. Uh, to discuss those issues and uh, a, a lot more, ANC national spokesperson Pule Mabe is in studio. Good to see you, Pule. Thanks for coming in. Uh, morning and uh, morning to your viewers. All right, let's talk first about um, uh, the arrest of Bongani Bongo. What's happening there? Can you give us some clarification? Because he's, he's made uh, all sorts of comments talking to the fact that there's a witch hunt against him, that he wasn't actually arrested, but he was arrested. He's out on bail. What's going on? Can you perhaps clarify it for us? Uh, well, uh, just maybe to preface this and say that... Uh, there, was, uh, there were media reports yesterday uh, to the extent that uh, Comrade Bongo uh, has been arrested, appeared in court and was out on a 5,000 rand bail. Uh, he remains uh, innocent. Uh, he continues to remain a member of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. And uh, he himself has said that the court process would allow him space uh, to be able to clarify and deal with all of the issues that are before the courts. And I'm sure that it is only fair that uh, we allow that open process because courts are not cigarette platforms. Mm. Uh, what the proceedings of courts are available to the public. It is only fair that uh, as a law-abiding citizen himself, he is accorded that space to be able to deal with issues uh, where they will be taking place which is uh, in the courts of the Republic of South Africa. Pula, do you, do you think it's fair that Bongani Bongo is still the chair of the Home Affairs Committee? Do you, do you think it's, it's fair that he's even still an MP with all of this hanging over his head? And, you know, I mean, now he's been arrested, he's out on bail. Does this not dampen the reputation of the ANC even further? But, Leanne, what do you do later on? Let's, let, let, let's just say later on uh, he is found innocent and uh, you made uh, because the presumption of uh, uh, innocent until proven guilty is a universally acceptable principle so we believe that our own comrades are law abiding uh, they will always do what is right uh, when called upon to appear before such uh, platforms this uh, we became aware of these reports yesterday and uh, and as far as i know these processes uh, are being dealt with at uh, the right platforms. If the ANC later on needs to come back and file commentary on the issues, the ANC shall do so. Mm. It, it, but it seems even if you are found guilty in a court of law, you can still uh, bag major positions. Let's talk about Batabile Lamini. In the highest court of the land, the constitutional court had found uh, that her actions were wrong, that she was guilty, and yet she's now been put into a major position, uh, which is uh, a pretty much so something that people are, are, are very much so against. Wh wh why still allow people that have tainted the reputation and the image of South Africa and the ANC to remain in these major positions? But, uh, Leanne, let's be fair to Comrade Batabile. Comrade Batabile has not been convicted. Uh, she's the president of the ANC Women's League. She's an elected member of the National Executive Committee, serves in the National Working Committee, has got uh, years of experience herself. Uh, she's, uh, she's a, selfless, a selfless activist. So she has done a lot uh, for women, uh, children, and the majority of people who are displaced. I know that even now uh, she ceased... Uh, with the campaign on 16 days uh, of activism. Uh, she's quite passionate about uh, such work. Uh, in her tenure as president of the Women's League, she has also worked towards ensuring that uh, there is a vibrant voice of young women and has consolidated the establishment of uh, the Young Women's Desk well within the 
overall uh, ambits of the ANC Women's League. You see, one of the things that the African National Congress would never do is that it can't, when it has got cadres well within its ranks, who have acquired vast amount of knowledge and experience over the years, mm. and these cadres are not utilized to the best of their capabilities uh, because of uh, what could seemingly be a, a, a public perception that suggests otherwise. Okay, let me, let me debate you. Public yes. perception versus the constitutional court. You talk about a selfless individual and a person who's been serving and has yes. got so much more capabilities. That's what you're saying. Yes. The constitutional court, the highest court in the land, described this former minister as reckless and grossly negligent, saying she failed to disclose information before an inquiry into her role in the social grants debacle. Uh, they found that Lamini should be liable personally for 20% of the legal cost of Black Sash. And, and the ruling goes on. I don't think I need to remind you of what yes, this ruling yes, yes. was. She has been found guilty. This is negligence. This is reputational damage. And yet you are still insisting that she has so much more to offer to the ruling party and to South Africa. Well, uh, uh, as, as, as a law-abiding citizen myself, uh, I wouldn't want Leanne on this important platform of uh, Morning Live uh, to argue on the merits and demerits of what the apex court in the land shall have pronounced on. Yeah. Uh, safe to say that uh, there is still a greater role that a person like Batabile Lamene can still play uh, in helping us to drive forward the reconstruction and development program yeah. that we in the ANC have long agreed on. Of course, where there are challenges, we are alive to those and have got to work towards making sure that we are set credible ethical leadership out in the public. We assure the public that we are responsible. We are a responsible party that will be able to deploy men and women who always carry their interest at heart. I don't, I, you know, it's so hard to sit here and believe that. When, uh, yes, we I can, do. I, well, well, I can give you... I, we I, do I, respect I, the, the apex court. We do respect yes. the rulings of our justice system, as I hope that the ANC does as well. And we keep thinking that the tide may have turned. We hear the president saying, things have changed, Tumamina, let's change everything. But the more things are spoken about changing, the more they say it, stay the same. And the old guard just keeps on reappearing. And I talk to the old guard that are guilty. They have been found guilty and they are still back. Do we not have young, good people that can come into these positions and revolutionize them? Well, well, uh, uh, Lian, we are doing that. I mean, there is, uh, there, is a, the, the, there, is, there is a great deal of, uh, of uh, intergenerational uh, mix in the work that we do in the executive, in various boards that operate as SOEs, uh, there is a wealth of young experience that is being brought on board mm. uh, to be able to learn from those that have been there, but also to be able to understand what are the things that we need to be doing to turn both our economy around and to also make sure that uh, we have got a sustainable social compact with our people. Zanele Flotwayo, another name that I'm going to throw at you. She is now being considered to be, a, uh, uh, to be the public service commissioner. She left the Mzunduzi municipality in a state of disrepair. The, the, the municipality was basically bankrupt uh, with uh, lots of findings against her. It was, it was collapsed. It was placed under administration because of maladministration and, and corruption. And yet, she is one out of nine candidates for this position out of 172 applications. Is this the best that we can do? How can we bring someone like this back? who, again, was removed for destroying an entire municipality? Uh, well, without going into uh, the specifics, Leon, I think it is important to appreciate that uh, where, where these comrades in their different uh, uh, professional capacities uh, will go to perform uh, whatever responsibilities that might have been apportioned to them, they work with collectives. They work with teams. But she oversees the collective. So, 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 so I'm she coming... She is the actual leader of all of this, and she is the one that unfortunately takes the full responsibility with those working underneath her. That, that, that's what leadership is about, surely. Well, the expectation is that having drawn all the different experiences, we expect that uh, going forward, 
we will be able to deal with all of these issues, attend to challenges that are there, and make sure that in the work that we do, we place the interest of our people and of those institutions first. Yeah. I can I tell you now, Lien, that uh, building responsive ethical institutions is one of the things that the ANC-led government has set out to do. Mm. And uh, they are going to be, already there are strong monetary mechanisms that are put in place so that uh, where there are acts of wrongdoing or malfeasance, we immediately act with greater speed to pronounce ourselves. Yeah. We are not going to wait for uh, things to collapse and only then do we come out. But maybe just to say this, it cannot be, it can't be the Democratic Alliance, a party that is contesting the very power that the ANC is holding on to to be able to transform the lives of our people that seeks to dictate an agenda. Yeah. You know, it can't be that. I mean, I, I am sure that we too ourselves uh, do not wake up every day and dictate to the DA how they should be executing their own work yeah. uh, where they lead. But also where the ANC is involved, the ANC doesn't get to these institutions and even want to be a body that uh, makes dictates on what ought to be happening. Mm. It believes that in applying their own thoughts and following their own processes, they will do what is right. Paula, it's very, very difficult to, to, to sit here and listen to what you are saying when official figures are coming out, reports are coming out. I mean, let's, let's talk to the Auditor General's report that again came out and it has shown us that, uh, this was yesterday, fruitless expenditure runs into billions of rands. And this has been the case for five years. And this is under the watchful eye of the ANC with people that you have put in charge of whether it be state-owned entities, municipalities, different districts. Yes. And, and these are official numbers that are coming out. So yes. it's not necessarily us looking and saying yes, what the DA are doing. It is the reality of the situation. So perhaps comment on that. Well, well Lien. For instance, the, age, the Auditor General is a Chapter 9 institution. It pronounces itself, it says that uh, there is fruitless or wasteful expenditure in this area of government. What that does is that uh, it empowers us to understand the kind of corrective measures that should be put in place. Uh, this also goes to show you how much we are willing ourselves uh, to run a very transparent machine. We are not saying to the Auditor General, because we are a party in government, do not expose wrongdoings when they happen in municipalities that we lead. I mean, under the Nationalist Party government, we never had things like the Auditor General. We never, we, we would, would not, these things would not be exposed. The fact that the ANC allows reports, the ANC-led government allows reports even about institutions where it presides and leads mm. uh, to show that uh, there are certain areas that need to, to be tightened. That alone should be giving, should be saying to the people of South Africa, this party that is in government is transparent, is responsible, is committed. Because you show commitment through transparency as well. We are not hiding things. We are not saying that uh, because we are a party in power, uh, reports that point to us not managing municipalities well should not be shown out there. We still say, even where provincial administrations are not being uh, properly managed or yeah. where there is wasteful or fruitless expenditure, those things should be exposed. Yeah. We even say, even to our own institutions of law enforcement, when they act, it doesn't matter who is involved. They must do what is right. Now, this is what must give the people of our country the assurance they need. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to unfortunately have to wrap this, but, but I'm going to leave it on a note where, yes, everything is out there for us to see, and we do see this, and we, we're not blind to it, and South Africans are a lot cleverer than sometimes the ruling pe party may believe, because we look at the Northwest Province, for an example. We were there doing a broadcast. This, this particular province has, is dysfunctional. It's not working. It's getting worse. There have only been two arrests with regard to what's going on. The Auditor General again saying that the Northwest incurred an enormous amount of a 3.2 billion rand irregular expenditure. Transparency is one thing. Accountability is another thing. And the reality is things are not turning around. Things are not getting better. They are deteriorating further. Well, you'd remember that the province was placed under administration. The expectation is that uh, uh, when the interministerial 
a, a committee appointed by the president conclude its work, they would be able to then say uh, what are the things that need to be tightened to make sure that uh, there is uh, good governance, there is proper accountability, service delivery is moving. It, only does, it just doesn't uh, relate only to the Northwest. It relates effectively to all of the provinces in the Republic of South Africa, even where the ANC doesn't lead. Remember that the provision of basic services doesn't only happen where we are leading. The people of the Western Cape, even if it is led by the Democratic Alliance, mm. also must be getting a, a clean water. They must be getting quality service. They too are entitled to uh, receive RDP houses where they are uh, beneficiaries or have enlisted for such. So we ought to make sure that the culture of service delivery is understood by all public representatives and all institutions of state act like that. Because uh, we must make sure that uh, how we apportion and direct public resources is in the interest of the people who have put governments uh, into position. All right, Pule, unfortunately we have to leave it there. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for talking to us here on the program about oh, some major issues that uh, needed answers to ANC national spokesperson Pule Mabe uh, talking about some developments relating to the ANC. Let's take a break. Uh, more guests after this. David Lewis, Corruption Watch is, uh, is next. Stay tuned.